dad took some of your guys' favorite classes, but made them into an absolute machine. And gave you guys tips and tricks to go from a one to a two, KD, two to a three, and of course, three to a four. The first gun comes from my boy Lorenzo with a .63 KD weapon. And no, this is not the TAC 56. This is the TAC V, as you can tell from the... And he's glowing... Now, I can imagine what you're struggling with when using this weapon is the recoil pattern. The attack is actually one of the hardest hidden weapons in the game, but if you don't hit your shots, then none of that matters. I mean, if you're not hitting your shots, it's actually going to be more detrimental to you. Hold on, my nerdy kid wants to say what's up. Boom! So considering your KD is a .63, the first thing we're going to focus on is actually hitting those shots. So the attachments I decided to use actually are for that reason, while still keeping the damage insanely high. I also partnered up with the MP5 just for the close range gunfights. Oh, hello. Oh, guppy. No, 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 Guppy. But with the given attachments, a lot of players just try to focus on maxing out the damage for every weapon. Again, yes, in theory, that makes sense, but only when you hit your shots. If you're not hitting your shots, none of that damage matters. And of course, the MP5 from close range gunfight. So taking the two most important attachments to not only max out the damage at range, but the bullet velocity. And then the rest of the attachments focusing on the visual recoil and standard recoil. Because at the end of the day, the TAC is probably one of the hardest weapons to use. So if we're going to take that .63 KD and max that anywhere closer to at least a 1... It's gonna start with this class right here. Also, you guys notice the sight I'm using is almost completely different than anything you probably have seen before. Oh my gosh, bro. Homie oh just got God. spit on. Shark bait. <laughs> and at the end of the day, you can have the most perfect class, but if you don't know how to close out a game, you're not gonna raise that KD. So the next five seconds, let me show you guys how to close out every single game possible. One life, baby. Okay, we got a player on the left-hand side. I'm gonna wait for him to make a move. Seems like he's camping on that staircase based off this UAV. Could also go out the window. This zone is gonna be insane to win. If I do, you guys gotta drop a sub. There he is. Now we're gonna go ahead. Get that kill. And I'm not going to go and push for that loot just yet. Instead, I'm going to wait for a response. A lot of players, even endgame, will go ahead and chase a thirsty third party. Because I like to call it. Got a proxy mine in there. Player on the right-hand side. Okay. And like I said, after each game, the KD is going to get higher. And the classes are going to get even more overpowered. Now, we are two-star hunted. I suppose if this was a player hunting me, he would have peaked already. Since I'm double threat, I'm going to make sure that maybe it's on the guy on the left-hand side. Because we see some shots over there. Come down here. See what this guy has. Nothing, nothing you need. Nothing you need. I will throw this down. I'm going to drop these plates. Go the stuns. Okay, there's a durable in there. I'm going to keep that. No. Okay, we saw the proxy mine. Player might be pushing up. So I'm going to do a nade. Most likely from that direction. Sounds like I hear him in there. Yeah, he's underneath me. Okay, so I'm not going to look directly underneath me. That's called tunnel vision. Instead, I'm going to look in the that's probably gonna be the player we're looking for anyways. Now, considering I know where that player is at, I'm gonna go ahead. He's on the left-hand side. He's most likely gonna push up on the coast. If not, go inside and then pop up there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prioritize the rotation, but I'm not gonna go in zone instead. I'm gonna go to the best spot called a choke point. So a little bit of head of, head of the zone. I'm gonna clean up one kill. I'm gonna look for another one. Oh, we got new camo. Let's go. I see him over there. I'm gonna peace strike ahead of him. Because most likely he's gonna get a peace strike notification. Like, okay, I got a backup. I'm going to cover. He's gonna actually go a little bit deeper. Oh, Nade. I'm not gonna push that way because he knows where I'm coming from. I'm gonna hit him with no armor. He's probably gonna back up here. He's gonna go away that I don't have that angle. Crack that live mark. Live mark him again because I might not get that full. Put him down. And ladies and gentlemen, make sure you drop that sub and join the note again. Boom! Next gun. Oh my god. The next weapon comes from my boy with a 1.37 KD, the STB. Oh my goodness. And the intervention to make the sniper support loadout he was talking about. And my man mentioned the Castle 545 alongside the LAB sniper. And although that might be his loadout for his sniper support, at the end of the day, I want to make sure I give him something that's really, really good. And the reason I'm not using his sniper is because it's not even able to one shot. And the intervention I have on here is actually specially made one. Oh my god, as you guys can tell. And instead of using the Castle 545, I use something with a little bit more mobility, damage, and of course, to help me finish those kills kills from any range possible and you guys saw the scb off rip already and it's good alongside the intervention just received a huge buff to it it does enough damage to take out multiple guys at once just like that there might be times where you get a hit marker but the rounds that i'm using actually make it a lot easier to get your full kill so instead of using the explosive rounds that have a much more drastic drop Oh my goodness, I'm using incendiary rounds because if I even get a hit marker on the gun, players aren't allowed to play it up until the fire goes out. So that gives me another one or two seconds to kind of close that gap between me and the player and finish them out with STB. Which is the secondary I'm using, and this guy is on my tail, bro. 
Well, at least he was on my tail. And again, that's worst case scenario that you don't get the headshot. You're so able to kind of get up close and personal and do that insane damage with SCB. Alongside, you guys have noticed with that sniper sword port weapon, I'm using a standard magazine size of 30. And the reason for that is because this is a gun I'm not running around solely using and getting multiple kills here and there. When you're using a sniper support weapon, either on the big map or Sheik Island, you're most likely playing a little bit more reserved to be the support player for your team, and that's all okay. But that doesn't mean you need to be rocking, you know, 45 oh, round you mag, right SMG, MP5, that's something to get in their the face air. all the time. So the gun like the STB should be used quickly and efficiently. Meaning fast ADS, fast mobility, and of course, no recoil. Because the shots you do shoot, you got to be able to hit 24 seconds left on resurgence. I'm definitely going to back it up here and play an area that I think is going to be a little bit more secure. No armor. I'm not going to push that. I'm going to throw that nade. Get another guy. Hit marker. Wall banked, and boom. Quick and easy, quick and easy. We're actually in zone as well. With 14 kills to our name, we have players on the right-hand side now. I do want to push up and get that loot. There might be somebody in the water as well. I'm not going to use that time to check that out. Instead, I'm going to quickly get to the high ground. That down there, just in case anybody pushed it while I was gone. Switch the ammo box. It seems to be good so far, but I'm going to stow away my tacticals and replenish those right away. I'm going to actually go for a little bit of a higher... I'm not going to overpeak it. There's no reason to. The only area I should be worried about is there. There, which seems to be getting shot at. And right here, the player decides to climb up. Base. Airstrike's coming in. Look at where it's coming in from on the map. I'm gonna close the doors here. It's coming from right to left. Getting hit with three players remaining, myself and the I have a cluster mine to work with as well. I'm not gonna use it right away. I see eyes on one player. Put him down. Again, the fire round is gonna tick, tick, tick. So he's just continuously taking that damage. Eyes on the other player. Seems to be right there. Now, I don't think he could go up high ground, but if he does, it's gonna be up on the left-hand side with no cover. He's not in the best position possible. Oh my god, this guy's a goon. He went all the way around. Boom! Now, I'm not gonna go ahead and push it too much with the SCB. I'm gonna push this bad boy right here. See if he peeks it. Boom! It's a W! Raise that KD! Let's go! The next gun we're talking about is the Vaznev SMG. It actually got sent in from my boy with the 2 KD, and we're gonna get him to a 3 by the end of this game. Now, all for it, one thing I want you guys to take note in only uses the bass that have no other secondary. This is where the perks that you guys use are actually going to be the most important. Oh my god, the up close fights. Come here. The up close fights are beautiful. I thought he was a sneaky little snake. Overkill perk is now gone and forgotten. And I actually want to talk about that perk a lot. Old Duty has some awesome new features where they allow players to actually buy certain weapons. Come on down, brother. I got to talk to you. You can buy certain weapons as long as those weapons are a primary gun. Sorry about that, Sui. If you get used to only rocking one gun off rip for at least one or two minutes, so you guys get enough money to buy a secondary weapon, you can replace that perk with probably the most overpowered perk in the game that I think is also the most underrated. If you guys know what Tracker does, you obviously see their footsteps, and it lasts for a good amount maybe two three seconds after they've left that one area from at range to up close this gun is doing everything and more oh my goodness cracking armor use that as a window to go finish this guy put him down look at this guy crack his armor again another guy sniping at me oh my god get me on main stage ladies and gentlemen i'm dodging everything throwing knife hits a thousand gifted these that perk track is actually able to shine in areas where it's more up close and personal rather than playing a little bit far back Oh my goodness. How boy? It's my town, boy. Oh. Pitch. Anyways, the perk tracker is going to be perfect for the loadout I'm using today. Alongside all the other perks I'll show you guys at the end. But it also comes down to using the right and most perfect build. Now, notice with this Vaznev class. Oh my god, that guy just got worked, bro. <laughs> Car change! If you guys haven't noticed with the Vaznev class, it actually looks pretty close to the CDL class that a lot of the pros are using. And, that, and that's because it is. However, we did change up a couple of our attachments to slow down a little bit of the ADS time. You guys notice, we are using a sight what? now on our weapon. Now, is a sight alone going to go ahead and improve your accuracy at range and, you know, be able to outgun a hemlock from 50 meters out? Uh, no, that's not going to be the case. But it's going to go help during the visual recoil when you're taking the medium to long range gunfights. Goodness. That leads me to my next point about the tacticals that I'm using. Notice I'm not using smokes. With a class like this, we're not trying to reposition ourselves to create more space between myself and an opponent. No, instead, we're trying to close that gap by using stuns and fast hands as well. That's going to be the key to winning these gunfights, especially up close and closing the gap. The play with smokes. Literally, oh. speak of the devil. Because although this gun's going to absolutely shred in the up close gunfight, you need to be wary about when to use this gun and also pay attention to your positioning. Which we're going to talk about right now as we close out this game. It's going to be the door. And that's going to be a 
like that opponent. And looking at the zone and the position I'm in, if I win this game, you guys gotta drop a sub and get this video to 2,000 likes. Paying attention, there doesn't seem to be any underground finesse we're gonna be able to out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to edge zone in, most likely with high ground. Probably tank some storm damage as well, because the rest of the zone is all out in the open. We're at 19 kills, closing out 20. And again, I don't have an AR, so even playing out in the field, although may favor getting more kills, I don't have an AR for these gunfights, and all this is low ground while this is high ground and out in the open. Look out there, we're missing two players. So if we're here fighting, and we know where everyone else is at, we hear two shots that are going off. We gotta go in here for third party. One player's gonna die. We have a stun, so as soon as I see that, you get looked at. I'm gonna see him, I think, behind the cart. That's gonna be the case. I'm gonna throw that stun. I'm gonna land that. I'm gonna go in the kill. Put that player down with one player underneath. Now, end game, I'm gonna pick up this and a sniper rifle as well. Get this player to a little bit lower. I'm gonna do that damage. He's gonna jump out. He's gonna give it to me. And baby, let me just say this. Drop a like, let's go! My man's with just over a 3 KD is having me bring out the new battle rifle. I got the bullets, I didn't even notice that. As well as the Lockman sub for my secondary. Off the rip, I'm gonna tell you guys, this gun is gonna be a lot harder to use, but way more rewarding than all the other classes. Oh my gosh. I know. Oh, I know. And that's gonna be because the recoil hits similar to an S pattern, which we've seen on the Ram 7, where it's a mix of both the horizontal and vertical recoil in one, which not a lot of players do the best at controlling which is why i took the luxury of switching up a couple of the attachments especially on the muzzle to first help with the initial gun kick control and then using the bottom angled grip the f tack ripper oh my god he thought it was a sneaky snake tells with the sway so you almost reduce all the recoil at least lowering the pattern a bit because like you guys see from this clip here it has a pretty drastic recoil pattern that a lot of players struggle with controlling but up close i mean it is dominant with the ubu i think the, i don't know what that says it says something though the MP5, of course, is the gun that I focus again on not really customizing it to max the damage with something more agile. I like all tokens and efficient in the close range gunfights. Holy cow, that guy scared me, bro. As well as the hip fire, because if you guys don't know, a lot of the SMGs in the recent meta or recent update actually improve the hip fire accuracy, making it a lot easier to control the recoil up close. So you'll notice a lot of me just hip firing to finish my kills with the MP5. Oh my god, that lag scared me. I'm sure he got scared too. All oh, the finesse. Oh, the finesse. He doesn't even know what's happening to him. Both these guns are highly efficient if you're able to land your shots. But again, that's why he is a 3KD player. So he's using something as complex as this setup probably isn't going to be for everyone. Because like I say, if you can't land your shots, then it's not going to be as efficient. You have the highest UTK weapon, but if you don't land your shots, it means nothing. You're going to get outgunned by someone using like an M13 or something. Oh my gosh, though. This gun is a little too powerful. We got 17 with 22 up. Make that 18. Oh my goodness. Hello. Dude, he came back. What a demon! Let's go hold these players out. We almost have 20 kills. Now make that 20. Oh my gosh, the headshot multi is absolutely insane as well. You mentioned the recoil pattern kicks up initially and then dashes to the left. So if you're able to counter that and land at least one headshot, the gun's base is a three shot kill. So, I think that headshot almost makes it a two shot. MP5, help me. Ah, thank you. Get a dumpy as well. Let's keep going. MP5 also made reliable for the medium range gunfights because it's not going to do enough damage. But if you have to hit a player who's not moving or is low HP, you'll be able to get the kill. Keep in mind, this is a battle rifle, meaning the base damage is already way more. The base damage is already way more than an assault rifle. So you already have a gun that's doing some insane damage. Oh my goodness. sitting in the corner oh god research is disabled okay we got 25 kills i'm not gonna chase the 30 bomb i want to chase a win here i see him over there dead okay. quick kill someone landing on me i'm gonna back up out of here i don't like playing that little close quarter oh this on floor casey pushes we got a player in front of us in there right to our right hand side as well little gas mask nice got my daddy he doesn't see me yet quickly put that player down i don't see him in there good position Oh my god, I got him on skates. Thank you for the MP5. Let's pop this UAV. We're looking for four players. One on left, one on right. I'm the third one, so we're missing two. Player seems to be at the buy station. If I live ping him, go behind the fence. I'm gonna get in that cover he was at. And we're looking for two. Oh god, you guys have to use this build. We're looking for two players. One one kill will get us a 30 bomb. Oh my god, I kind of glided on that rooftop. I'm gonna try to keep the high ground here. Most players aren't gonna rotate up the middle unless he's already in that building. I'm gonna expect the left-hand side because I came from right. I see him, he's at the fence. Peekaboo. I'm not gonna commit to that kill then. Oh, this zone is gonna be the death of me. I'm gonna have to make a play here with the car. Fly ping him. Crack his armor. Reposition at the high ground. Re peek him. Poke him again. We're just kind of doing that base damage over and over. He's most likely gonna commit on the left hand side, but wary in case to stand up. Ooh, no audio. Why? No audio. 